Champions Cup this weekend, folks. There's a lot of games on Saturday and Sunday. <clears throat> it's the last two that are on on Sunday. Uh, we'll go through some of the lineups very quickly. Predictions and whatnot. You guys can let me know your thoughts on how things may be going to go. All these numbers I've written down the sides of the, uh, the teams was their pre-round of 16 record. Their pool stage record. So wins, losses, and potentially draws if they've got a third number on them. Remember, a bunch of these games were either called draws due to COVID, some were just genuinely out and out cancelled, so it was a bit of a mess back in those days. It seems to have settled down, thankfully, a lot since then. Uh, the first one, Bordeaux and La Rochelle. Remember, this is the uh, the first round of two, so it's the team with the better record that has to travel away first so they can finish things off at home. So that's La Rochelle with their 3-1 record go into Bordeaux. This one's probably made a little bit spicier by the fact that these guys played just last week in the chair in the top 14 and that was the old slap. The slapping incident between, oh, what's the Bordeaux coach's name? I forget his name and uh, Ogara. Apparently they're both pretty lively chaps and um, I think they both got bans so I don't think they'll be there which kind of detracts a little bit from the spectacle but anyway um, it was 16 points to 15 last week with La Rochelle getting the job done. Um, this week, I look at the lineups, and they're both pretty tidy, man. I mean, you look at the Bordeaux, you've got wingers like Cordero and Lamb. If you're a Southern Hemisphere fan, uh, those names will be very familiar to you. You've got Lamarat Wokies in the back row this week rather than the playing in the second row like he does for France. So, yeah, the, uh, the Bordeaux lineup looks strong to me, although I don't know all the names because I don't follow top 14 enough. You guys will have to let me know how far or closeness is to a full strength Bordeaux side. Uh, the La Rochelle side looks large. I mean, Priso, Bukari, and Antonio in that front row, those are some proper big units. So, scrum time, I would expect those guys to be busy. You've obviously got the likes of Victor Vito, uh, Gregory Aldrit in the uh, in the back row, Kerbalo and West is that same kind of 19 combo, which we're pretty familiar with from, uh, from La Rochelle. I mean, stats wise, Bordeaux's kind of up there with the offloads. Likewise, La Rochelle, I mean, you got Aldred, I think he's the third guy for carries in the competition, so he's very busy, same way he is for France. Um, so yeah, should be an interesting one. That's the early game, it's on at uh, 2 o'clock local time, so I think that's 1 o'clock uh, in the UK. Um, Bordeaux are the favourites, interestingly, with the bookies by 2, but the rugby forecast algorithm says La Rochelle by 1, so either way that one is supposed to be a pretty tight one. Next one's an all-premiership affair between Sale and Bristol. From memory, Bristol didn't even have to play a game for like the, was it the first two or three rounds. Their games just kept getting canned. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but yeah, that's the way my memory serves. In the premiership, Sale's certainly in a lot better form than Bristol. Bristol are having a terrible season. Um, but in the Champions Cup, man, you never know. I just watched, uh, spoiler alert for the Connacht and uh, Leinster game, that was closer than, um, than the the URC games have been between those two sides anyway. So you never know uh, in the Champions Cup. Um, Sale, they've still put out a pretty a pretty strong lineup. I mean, you got like Bevan Rod. I come out of Merber's back and he's not seen a lot of game time since he's been returning from injury. So good to see him getting a start. Uh, Luke Diak is there, Jean-Luc Dupria. So uh, the South African connection, Dan Dupria is at number eight and he's been in cracking form. Faf and uh, Rob Dupria there as well. Tui Lung is back and he's getting a start in the midfield. So... Knock on something wood that that guy can just please stay fit. And um, that'll be good for both Sale and for England. So uh, we'll see how he goes for Bristol. Um, interestingly, Semi Rand. Rand was on the bench. Charles Pietel on the bench. Fitz Harding's on the bench. Those guys, I think, started in recent weeks. So it's a little bit of a change for um, for Pat Lamb. And the boys, Piers O'Connor is starting, though, at 13. Harry Randall's still there at 9. Callum Sheedy's still there at 10. So... It seems like a wee bit of rotation. Bristol are right up there for offloads in the um, in the Champions Cup anyway, which is surprising because I don't think they played that many games. So we'll see if they just kind of, I don't know, chuck everything around or if they, um, I mean, this is their only chance to get anything out of the season because they're not getting anything in the Premiership. So maybe they will go hard at it, but it is interesting with some of the selection choices, put it that way. Um, Sale are the favorites with the bookies by six and with the algorithm by 12 that one uh, is on at the same time as the Bordeaux one so you'll kind of need to pick which one you want to watch between the two uh, the next one Toulouse and Ulster remember Toulouse lost the game and then they had a game called off so they ended up with kind of a bad record was it one game called off or two they had a bad record they only just qualified through the skin of their teeth and Ulster went through perfect but their reward for getting a perfect run is to face Toulouse which is uh 
Not easy. Not easy, but this is probably, I would have thought, one of the must-watch games of the round. I mean, the Toulouse lineup. it's almost like when you look at length sometimes in terms of the amount of internationals. Dupont's there, Intermax there, Ramos is there, Francois Cruz is there, Flamont is there, for Springbok's connection, Al starts there, Wallaby's connection, Rory Arnold's there, so Malvaka starting. It's a pretty hardcore Toulouse lineup. And again, I don't watch enough top 14 to know uh, how close that is to their full strength and if they're missing anyone in particular. But I mean, Peter Aki, Malia, LaBelle, there's names stacked all through this um, Toulouse side. So that's just always going to be the case because they're one of the powerhouse. Uh, teams, but Ulster are certainly no slouches, man. They're, they're doing really well in the URC and their record in the Champions Cup and the pool stage kind of speaks for itself. I mean, their side, uh, a lot of these guys, maybe if you don't watch the URC, you probably, you wouldn't maybe know guys like Nick Timoney. That guy's having a cracking season, get through loads of tackles, big carries, Matthew Ray as well. Ian Henderson, most people I think would, would uh, know him from his Ireland duties. Mike Lowry, the wee fullback who got his Ireland debut, um, in the Six Nations against Italy, he's the second guy for carries in the competition and the first guy for clean breaks. So certainly you don't want to sleep on that guy. Rob Balakoon's on the right wing. He's been uh, in, you know, crack and form. He's a weird guy that he runs fast, but doesn't look like he's running that fast. He's really, I don't know, uh, tricky on the eye. Something about the way he runs. He's very quick. Um, and then Stuart McCloskey is a big unit in that midfield. So him up against Aki should be a... A great watch. Ulster are first for defenders beaten in the, the pool stage of the Champions Cup. So don't don't sleep on the Ulster guys because, um, yeah, they're, they're a good team uh, to lose, obviously, with their offloads and whatnot as well. Just half the French team. So there you go. Um, this one's on at 4.15 local time. Um, so that's uh, 3.15 BST. Wayne Barnes is the ref for that one. Uh, the bookies have got to lose by 10 which is maybe not too surprising, but the algorithm actually gives Ulster the win by one. We'll see. Uh, the next one, Exeter and Munster. Um, Exeter just starting to come good in the Premiership, if you've been following that competition. Still not looking the side they were a couple of years ago, but they're up the right end of the table. Um, Munster's kind of had a couple of mixed results recent times. Uh, pretty heavy loss to Leinster the other day. And uh, a trip to Sandy Park is certainly not an easy one. Exeter um, have certainly got a few of their, their big guns that won the Champions Cup only a few years ago. Uh, Sam Simmons is probably the most obvious one that you're thinking of. He's got seven tries. I think he's the top try scorer from the pool stages. So uh, you certainly need to watch out for that guy from close range. His brother's at 10. Slade's in the midfield. Stuart Hogg's at fullback. Uh, Harry Williams tight head. So yeah, Johnny Gray's there. It's, um, it seems to me like it's a pretty... A pretty strong looking <coughs> exit aside, whereas the Munster guys looks like they've gone with a 6 2 split. There's no um, Carberry, so you've got uh, Ben Healy. I'm assuming Carberry is injured. Ben Healy starting at 10, I guess. Rory Scannell's covering 10. Uh, I don't know. Someone educate me into how this lineup makes sense. I don't know. It just seems a bit. I mean, Jack O'Donoghue's captain, and he's been in cracking form which is good news, like watch out for his ball carrying. There's, um, yeah, I don't know. This, this Munster lineup seems to be missing a few guys. Probably should have read their press release to see who is injured, but um, I've got to take my kids out very, very shortly. Dale is there in the midfield. Chris Farrell, so there's some big ball carrying right there. Keith Hills and Zebo on the wing, so plenty of experience. Um, but yeah, I reckon Exeter are certainly going to be favorites for that one, and they are with the bookies by seven. Uh, it's by one though for Munster with the algorithm. Um, Exeter are second for tries in the pool stages despite their record and uh, Munster were first for penalty goals. So there you go, there's a wee stat for you. That one's on at 5.30 BST. So um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that one goes. That one might be another must watch for me as well. We'll see. The last of the Saturday games is Stade Francais up against Racing 92. So it's a uh, Parisian affair i would imagine in the top 14 these guys have got to be rivals right um do educate me on that one as well um looking at the lineups i'm gonna say that rushing 92 probably are the favorites i just recognize more of the names <coughs> from from the rushing lineup 
than I do from the Stade Francais line. But I mean, I recognize certain guys like Stefan Avalu, uh, former Wallabies guy, he's there uh, on the right wing. Makalu, the uh, the French international, he's a, he's a real handful, he's at number six. Uh, Azago is there in the second row, so there's certainly, Castets is there at loose head, so there's certainly some some uh, talent in the Stade Francais lineup. But then I look at the Racing back line, Teddy Thomas, Gael Ficou, Chauvency, Imoff, Russell, that, that, that's that's a pretty wicked looking back line. You got Shah there. First time I'll get to see Inyakane play uh, in Russian colors. Shuzunu is there. So, yeah. I mean, I'm not a guy to ask you about the top 14 teams, but that looks like, on paper to me, uh, the Russian side should be favorites. Um, and they are, with the bookies by seven and with the algorithm by nine. Uh, that one's a 6.30 local kickoff, so 5.30 BST. Um, yeah, that one could be an interesting one. Oh, I've got to decide which games I'm going to watch. I mean, I have a choice because I've got to depend on which games my local broadcaster decides to put on. Uh, the two Sunday games, Montpellier and Quinns. Montpellier have actually put out a full-strength team, seemingly. They uh, they put out a real second-string team in the pool stages and got walloped by Leinster. I remember that much, but that seems like ancient history. I mean, I wasn't. That was actually the first side I looked up when I saw the lineups where I was Montpellier. I wanted to see if they put a full strength team out or not. I mean, Rates, Boutier, Dumaru, Galbisi, Reinach, Mercer, um, Payanga, Amosa, Lamasatele, uh, Paul Willemsa. Like, there's a lot of. Yeah, Nico Jensen and Renzi with a lot of big guns in that Montpellier lineup, which is pleasing. Because the Champions Cup, man, you want to be putting your, your big guns out, right? And uh, so have Quinns, who were in cracking form in the group stages. Don Brandt's got six tries in this competition. He's at number eight. Uh, Esther Hazen's been a big unit in that midfield. He continues on at 12. Hugh Jones is at fullback. Smith and Kerr are that same 9 and 10 combo. Marla's in the front row. So, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's pretty near full strength for the Quinns guys as well. Um, that being said, they are underdogs with the uh, bookies it's Montpellier by four I guess home advantage being a big thing there um, but that being said Harlequins are the favorites with the algorithm by one I reckon the Montpellier lost to Lens they probably uh, put them down a few estimations in the uh, algorithms thinking because the algorithm doesn't care what team you put out it just cares about the result and the margin and whatnot the last one is Clermont and Leicester remember Leicester are Killing it in the Premiership, and they had a pretty bloody good record uh, in the Champions Cup as well. Clermont was another team that kind of just scraped through. But, I mean, you've got Raka. Uh, there's no Peno in the team this week, but Raka was like the fourth guy for clean breaks. you got Fafana and Moala uh, in the midfield, which is pretty tidy. Lopez and Parra, that's had a very experienced 9-10 combo uh, as well. Slimani is there, Baja Mahina is there, and he's captain for this one, so... I'm certainly not going to be writing off this Claremont team. Matsushima's there at fullback as well for your Japanese connection. But Leicester, be interesting to see, man, because, um, as I said, in the Premiership, they have been very, very good this year. They've only lost two or three games. They've been a really hard team to beat, and they've put out a very strong lineup. Genge, Montoya, and Hayes, that's an all-international front row. Chesham's now international in the second row. Uh, Visa's at number eight. Springbok, Ben Youngs, and George Ford. Uh, 19 combo, certainly a lot of experience with those guys. Interestingly, Salmaki gets a start. I don't think we've seen him for a wee while on the left wing. Uh, Potter and Stewart at uh, 14 and 15. So, yeah, it's certainly a strong side for the Leicester boys as well. Um, it's that Georgian ref for that one as well, Nika Amashukeli. And he's actually really good. He's probably one of the best up-and-coming young refs around. So I'll be pleased to see um, him get in the top flight game. We see him pop up every now and again. Predictions wise, this one's supposed to be the closest. Uh, the bookies have got this one pretty much at evens, but Claremont by half a point. And uh, the rugby forecast algorithm's also got Claremont, but just by the one. So whew, there you go. I know it wasn't incredibly detailed stuff because so many games and my children are waiting, but I will upload this video now. You guys enjoy your evenings up in the Northern Hemisphere. Enjoy your day. If you're down here, the weather is certainly beautiful down here. And I look forward to watching a bunch of these games tomorrow. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll talk to you guys later.